Would you please start off by telling us your name? My name is Tiffany Stuck. I live in Sealands Grove. Uh, what have you brought to the harvest today? Old and new cookbooks. <laughs> so, um, how did you or your family acquire these items? Uh, well, these aren't from my family. These I all bought or, or searched out to see because I know they existed since I did my family tree. They're significant to me, Sealands Grove and Snyder County. Uh, so churches and f like the Sales Grove Center and Sales Grove High School, but uh, I I bought them. I bought them. Nobody gave them to me. I had to buy them. Okay. So, what is the story behind each of them? So, okay. Like of course, in most families, you have your own. I didn't bring my homemade recipes shoved mm -hmm. in a, a three ring binder that yeah. I have for you know my stuff. Mm -hmm. But this is how I'm going to go through these quick. Uh, this is Sales Grove High School. My, 2011. Okay, they made a cookbook. My name's in here. I put some recipes in here to get my name in a cookbook. I'm, you know, I'm 54 years old. I wanted my name in a cookbook. I got since I found out about it, cookbooks. Doing the family tree of churches and local f places, jobs like the Sales Grove Center or library. That's how you get uh, your name in a cookbook by donating a recipe. Okay, so now my name's in here, and I use my three children's names because they went to school at Sales Grove. So did I. And like I said, my son played on the Sales Grove football team. So I uh, made sure I got ours in here. So this is Seals with football the team to make money. So mm -hmm. there you go, fundraiser. So that's great. That's me and our Tiffany Stuck and my three kids, Tyson, Tara, Holly. Okay, now this is where I live, Crotterville. Our church, this is from 1950, so somewhere around there. Crotterville. We used to have a post office. We don't anymore. So that's significant to me. I wish I had some stuff stamped from Crotterville since my mother's maiden name is Crotzer and my mm -hmm. family tree's Crotzer and the town's called Crotzer. Okay, and that's spelled many names. But this is one cookbook from the church from the 1950s there. This is another family. This is Zion Evangelical Lutheran Church. This is a Port Treverton. I have a couple of family members buried out there at that church. And the family tree names are in here. You know, that's on the other side, the stuck side. Okay, so that's a Port Treverton cookbook from the 1950s too. Uh, and then here, this is a very, I love this one. This is from Grubbs. Grubbs is one of the oldest churches in the area, uh, Mount Pleasant Mills. Mm -hmm. A lot of my family members, like I said, they got baptized there, married there, confirmed there. So that's part of the family tree by the cookbooks. Their names are in here, you know, like I said. And then their recipes, our family recipes are in here. And like I said, I didn't get anything passed on to me. I bought these out, seeked them out. I knew they existed mm -hmm. or if I come across them. Okay, so that's Grubbs Church in Mount Pleasant Mills. That's one of my favorites because a lot of my family members are there. This is also Grubbs. But see, Grubbs changed the name since they're Germans. Mm -hmm. they, uh, they changed the name to Bodarf. I don't know if it's different... I forget if it's different past or whatever, but the ch grubs now, see there it's grubs and in parentheses bodarfs. See, then here it's bodarfs in parentheses grubs. This is the newer one. That's how it goes. Now, this is Richfield Dutch Days at Snyder County, the very edge, you know, to Juniata County. Mm -hmm. But half my relatives, all the Germans that didn't come from this side, from Philadelphia up to, uh, they came basically to Juniata County, then migrated this way. You know what I mean? They didn't come from the other side of the river and moved over this side. They moved from Philadelphia, signed the books, went to Juniata County the, out there, uh, Ridgefield, Wani Road, you know, Crossroads Cemetery. That's where they are. And they're all old Mennonite, the Germans. That's why there's no flags on their graves. There's no Civil mm -hmm. War flags or anything because they don't want anything to notice. So this is Ridgefield. This is very important to me, too. I bought this at the restaurant there. They have it different years. I'd lucky to get one. This one is the Neiman's Church. Okay, the two brothers, one spells it N-I-E-M-O-N-D-S, the one spells it N-E-I-M-O-N-D-S. Just because one was a chicken farmer, they call it hatchery, and the other one was a construction farmer, okay? Mm -hmm. So that's why they kept, oh, that's my brother, you know, because they didn't want to get confused all the time, the two brothers, yeah, they get a little ego, you know. <laughs> but this is the older one. I didn't have the money for the newer one, but I do want to get the newer one, Neiman's Church. And that old church, they don't really have services up there anymore. Well, yeah, they do have a new, new people took over it. But this original Neiman's moved down to the highway now, Route 35. And an old men of my life took over the Neiman's up the hill where the graveyard is. But that's very significant to me because all my family members are in there that are Neiman's. These two are the Seals Grove. This is Seals Snyder County Senior Center, Snyder County Senior Citizens, and this is the Seals Grove Library. These don't really have significant to me, you know, family tree. But since it's Snyder County Senior Center and Snyder County Library, I haven't researched in there if my family tree names are in there. When they are, I highlight them and underline them so that I know my family tree, that was a recipes. That's just because they're Seals Grove, Snyder County. These two are not really in my family tree, but they're from Seals Grove. They're the church in town here. What does it say? It's a 200th anniversary cookbook, St. Paul's United Church of Christ. 
And yeah, St. Paul. Yeah, that's a big church down Mark Street. Yeah, that mm -hmm. is. I do have family members in there. That's right. Because they have a graveyard. Where they have graveyards, then I did the research with the family tree. But these two are significant too. So I'm lucky to find them. You know what I mean? And I'm sure they're from the 50s. You can tell they're old. So these two, United Church Methodist, Christ United Methodist for Women. That's in Seals Grove too. Christ United Methodist Church. Okay. Uh, so I just got it because it's Seals Grove. I don't know if there's family tree in there. I didn't research it yet. But like I said, it's nice. And then this one is the 8th Street, Mill Street Church that just burned. That's a picture of it there. This is their cookbook. I bought it because it's a Seals Grove Church. I didn't research mm -hmm. in there yet. These two are, oh yeah, Seals Grove Center. I had a lot of family members that worked there. I'm in nursing, and I've been a registered nurse 20 years. But these are two from the Seals Grove Center. The staff must have made them for some fundraiser for a project there. So that's Seals Grove, out 522. Mm -hmm. And this, I just brought along, these are postcards from Snyder County, you know, Whispering Pines. Mm -hmm. It's a beautiful apple orchard mm -hmm. uh, discount grocery store run by Amish people. Yeah. So I, they, they give free postcards now. They used to sell postcards. Now they just give free ones so you advertise for themselves. So. Well, that's awesome. Um, so you definitely touched on this a little bit with each of them, but what is the main reason why you brought all, all of these cookbooks here today? Well, I was never really a good cook. I mean, I only learned a few things because, you know, my both my parents worked. So I don't really think I learned anything from cooking from them. And uh, my both all my, both all four of my grandparents were Pens spoke Pennsylvania Dutch and were farmers. So, of course, I used to eat pig brain stuff like that but I never asked how to make it you know but uh, I did learn like uh, watching my Aunt Mary make uh, dough for pot pie you know just eggs and flour a little water or milk if you have milk you're rich and you put it in you know farmers always have cows usually but if you don't you just use water and flour actually if you really have no money just flour and water to make and then boil it and you have you know like pot pie mm -hmm. but if, like I said if you I use just eggs because it's more rich eggs and milk and I buy dry milk so you can use a little water and it's richer. But uh, I observed, my, like I said, my grandparents died when I was, my one grandma died when I was 24. The other one died when, you know, when I was like, uh, what, what's, two, I don't know, in my 30s, 40s, 30s, late 30s. Uh, my 30s. So one died at 24, one died at 30. Well, at 24, I was still running around, you know, changing jobs, whatever, going to the beach, ski resort, beach resort. But my grandma stuck. I said, she used to make rice, uh, pudding stuff like that, you know, tapioca pudding and stuff. But she was a little old, so she I didn't really watch what I didn't eat. I ate all the time. Mm -hmm. But uh, but the, my other grandmother, oh, I know what she made that was great. Mm -hmm. She used to make Easter eggs using the onion shells. You know, onion shells are brown. She used to boil the onion shells, and that's how she colored her eggs. Oh. You know, you put wax crayon on them uh, mm -hmm. to make like a picture. Then you just soak them in the onion shells. That was always neat. Oh, that's really cool. Yeah, mm -hmm. to make colored eggs, and. Uh, and that, like I said, the best thing, oh, my other grandmother, she was a big heavy set farm woman. She uh, used to strain the milk through the cheesecloth, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And she always had alfalfa growing on, like in a cake pan, to see if the seeds were good, you know, on the wood stove. The kitchen stove was a wood stove, you know, those big old stoves. But uh, uh, like I said, uh, so I learned, and like I said, fried potatoes. You lived on fried potatoes, the same old iron skillet, and there was always potato soup, you know. And they always, everybody had a huge garden. Or my, little, my other grandmother called it a truck patch. Hers wasn't as big, it was a truck patch. But uh, there's actually a road in Mount Pleasant Mills called Potato Valley Road. My <laughs> grandma, I have a picture of her and all the people standing with their aprons and their baskets because they were potato pickers, even though they had their own farms. Like Mount Pleasant Mills, a big mountain stone house on Easter Valley Road, that was, where, that was my grandparents' farm. It was my grandfather Lauber's mom. Ivan Lauber has it across the street now. But, uh, that was where my dad and my aunt were born and my grandparents lived. And uh, it's a white barn. I said that's a Mount Stone house right there. But uh, so, like I said, and then they moved to Penn's Creek and here. But they're all Mount Pleasant Mills farmers and all country. And they all came f from Juniata County, moved east until they got to Seals Grove. Seals Grove was just, like I said, Penn's Creek Massacre was the Stuck family in Kramer, where the Indians, but this was a dangerous area. So they risked their lives coming from Juniata County here. But uh, John Grable is the first settler in Juniata County. He's like my eighth great grandfather or something like that out at Crossroads Cemetery. There at the Richfield County line to Juniata is right there. The mailbox for Crossroads Cemetery is on the other side of the street. The cemetery and the church on this side of the street. So it has a Juniata address because the mailbox, even though it's in Snyder County. But like I said, it's old Mennonite, so there's no flags or anything on there. They don't want no recognition. But that's where they all, everybody, Grable, Auker, and Huffman, Reichenbach, uh, like I said, Stuck, Kratzer, 
all come from Juniata County. The settlers all, they went out there. Do you ever go out to Beaver Town in Juniata County? Mm -hmm. It's nice. beautiful, God's country. That's why mm -hmm. Davy Jones lived there. Okay. It's beautiful, it's God's country. It's like Lancaster, but be more beautiful because you got both running mountains. You got the Shade Mountain running mm -hmm. and Jackson Mountain. Two, you're driving out between two Appalachian Trail mountains like. That's where Davy Jones, that's why he lived out there. Okay. But it's beautiful and I said, but there's not a lot of work out there and stuff. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the last question is just, how did you hear about the History Harvest? Radio today? on the WKOK or something I heard on the radio, because I listen to AM radio, church stations, and information. I can't listen to, I mean, I love rock and roll, and I love all kinds of pop and disco, and I hear them, but, but I can't probably take more than a minute or so, because I already heard them 2,000 <laughs> times. I don't want to yeah. hear, let's dance again, another 2,000 times. <laughs> so I want education, mm -hmm. you know. Well, thank you so much for your time and for bringing your items in. Yeah, I enjoy them. Thank you for letting me share. Mm.